institute has uh, an impaired baseline vision, monitoring of visual acuity is difficult. However, in cases of refractive errors or early cataracts, uh, you can still give because uh, these usually don't affect vision <coughs> after spectacle correction. Patients who have uh, difficulty in appreciating and uh, reporting visual symptoms like young age, uh, children, uh, relatively young children, patients with language difficulties or dementia, in them, uh, 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 should be used with caution. Another, uh, others are the patients with impaired renal function. Ethambutol is excreted by the kidney, uh, the renal root, so patients with impaired renal function, even the uh, normal doses uh, would give rise to elevated serum levels of ethambutol and may precipitate toxicity. Uh, for patients who are uh, given ethambutol, health education should be given to them about the uh, potential side effects of this uh, and patients should be made conscious. The baseline visual acuity uh, vision test with uh, Snellen's chart and simply Shira chart can uh, can be before starting the treatment and uh, uh, monitoring. Actually, there is no recommended uh, uh, duration for monitoring. It could be from one to three months. Every one to three months, the patient, uh, if everything is normal, they can be uh, monitored uh, with normal renal function. Uh, Ethambutol may be safely used uh, at dose of 15 mg per kg per dose, but however, if we are going for higher doses like 25 mg per kg, it should not be used for more than two months. Uh, since we have the dots uh, directly observed treatment, the health of workers should be educated uh, to monitor the patient closely for symptoms. Uh, if, if the patient uh, has any suspicious of drug-induced ocular toxicity, that should be either documented or the patient should be sent to an ophthalmologist. Uh, for recording of fundus uh, ex examination, visual acuity, and uh, visual field assessment. In severe optic neuritis, as we talked, uh, as soon as it should also be stopped. However, in less severe cases, we can continue an age, but the pyridoxine level may be increased from, uh, from 40 mg to 50 to 100 mg. <coughs> this was, uh, we thought we'll put in some studies. This was a case of incident, uh, saw, the, saw the incidence of corridor tubercles in uh, neurotuberculosis patients. 52 patients uh, for, with neurotuberculosis were evaluated for the presence of corridor tubercles on the fundus. And around uh, 23 eyes, that means 34% of them had corridor tubercles along with neurotuberculosis. And out of them, 46% uh, were present in intracranial granomas, and around 53% uh, was present in tubercular meningitis. So corridor tubercles can be, uh, uh, in the fundus can be an important diagnostic uh, marker for uh, underlying systemic uh, tubercular infections. This is how a evolution of a corridor tubercle. To start with, they, they, in the early stage, they, they are yellowish uh, subretinal uh, inflammatory changes with a very indistinct margins, maybe elevated also. With time, these margins become more and more uh, well-defined when they start healing and pigmentation sets in until the red stage you have a pigmentary scar. Uh, this is the ocular manifestations, uh, uh, study of ocular manifestations of tubercular meningitis. To start, uh, start with, they said the most common uh, of, of them are the optic disc changes, around 62% had papillitis. Next, the most important uh, is the pupillary changes and cranial nerve palsies. Third one is the most commonly affected, choroidal tubercles and papillima suggest a great prognosis. This was a very important study. This showed ocular manifestations of tubercular uh, meningitis and, and you actually can prognosticate uh, these cases based on the ocular findings as well. They, are, uh, they studied 50 cases with ocular involvement was present as high as 76 percent. Cranial nerve involvement was more very common. O ocular motor nerve was most common from then abducent nerve and facial nerve. Pupillary involvement could be anything from dilated fixed pupil to semi-dilated or sluggish reacting. Optic nerve involvement is 62%. They could be primary optic atrophy or secondary optic atrophy. Uh, papillitis was found more common than papilledema. Corridor tubercles spell often also be present. Prognosis, the mortality is highest in patients with uh, abducent nerve involvement. Uh, complete third nerve involvement also shows high mortality. Uh, dilated fixed pupils are the, have the gravest, uh, uh, and next is semi dilated pupil. Uh, cases showing papilledema also have a grave prognosis. Thank you.
this was after uh, 12 days of treatment, which is very early. Those Those actually, patient uh, was given 800 milligrams. It was, she was 30 kg. She was 30 kg. It was uh, uh, around uh, uh, every alternate day therapy. It was just around 15 milligrams per kg. She was on dots therapy. She was on dots therapy. Category 1 dots. Is it, a, is it a dose is important or duration is important? Both are important. Both. Both. It is more related to dose. If it is, uh, as I said, if it is more than 35 <coughs> milligram, the incidence is as high as 38%. If it is, uh, if it is uh, 25 milligram, it is around six to, uh, 5 to 6%. And uh, around uh, 15 milligram, it's around 1%. Is there any hypersensitivity? Idiosyncratic hypersensitivity reaction like optic. No, it's not an idiosyncratic reaction. It's basically the accelerating effect of ethyl. In this case, they left only 12 days. After 12 days of it. Usually it takes two months. One and a half. Two months. 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 But uh, she was toxic amlopia do precipitate uh, uh, ethamibular toxicities like tobacco and uh, alcoholism, but uh, I don't, uh, this patient didn't have such a <laughs> Probably nutrition because zinc, low, low, low zinc uh, levels can be disposed to ethamibular toxicities. Actually, ethamibular works with the, the uh, this <coughs> metabolism enzymes, disruption of the enzymes. Ethamibular works in the tubercular muscle. Same mechanism occurs also here in the extension of fiber also. This was the way. Action fibers were there. They, they are sort of the same. The mechanism like that. Up to what phase it is reversible? Pardon? Uh, what phase, what stage it is reversible of the neuritis? It's very difficult. Actually, reversibility, the opinion is divided. Uh, the moment we are suspecting a visual, uh, like a visual acuity disturbance or a color vision uh, per perception difference, it should be immediately stopped. And then uh, and stoppage of, of the therapy is the only treatment. So chances of reversibility in is early there? stoppage huh. will be the prognosis is good. Prognosis okay. is better. Definitely. Actually, uh, actually, what is said that if, if even after disturb, visual disturbance it is still continued, then uh, from optic neuritis it can even affect the optic charisma. Oh. And then we get a bitemporal uh, visual field of MNOPS and all. It takes up to one year for the reversibility of some cases. But uh, it will not become, never it will come to pre, pre uh, treatment levels. There is always a permanent damage. So. The earlier the medicine is stopped, detected, that yes. is better actually. That message should go immediately, that anybody who is starting, the, the doctor should monitor vision immediately. The earliest sign? Discriminate actually, that is the abnormal color perception. In uh, intelligent patients, they do say that uh, the trees are appearing, <coughs> the green color of the trees, uh, that is what the uh, girl was like saying as uh, the trees were appearing some other color and all, leaves of the trees, that was what, though uh, when she came to our clinic, we couldn't assess the vision because it was just light perception. Any specific investigation you have to go for this? Sir, uh, specific investigation, uh, uh, visual fields is, you can document a visual field, usually central scotoma, if the vision is good, central and central cecal scotoma are there, uh, if there is a, there, uh, a peripheral constriction can also be there, there can be bitemporal uh, hemianopias, uh, that is one, we can uh, we can document the color vision, from a, say, like an Ishiara chart or, most important is the Ishiara chart, commonly used, uh, we document the vision, the pupillary reaction, and uh, sir, we can, if, if you are thinking it to be some other, uh, we can go for a VEP. VEP should... MRI also, they are doing research to see the not five or something, no, but not all cases. Usually not that. Yeah. Actually, uh, in this patient, we had a choroidal tubercle, so there could be disseminated tuberculosis. So actually, CD scan had already been done. So there were uh, there brain parenchyma lesions. Uh, there was lesion in the... Lungs also, so it was a disseminated team. Very quite common. Other activities like your linozolid and chlorophenicol. Chlorophenicol also. There are a few, uh, even isoniazid. Isoniazid and the reformist activity for chlorophenicol. Bin pistin also. Bin pistin also. What is the endoscopy sign? Endoscopy is usually normal. 
normal. Yes, because it's a retrobulbar neuritis. That is beyond which uh, the neuritis occurs beyond the disc. So the disc is there is no disc change as usual. Congenital other cause of optic neuritis is a very cupping white cupping. Ah, lemmas. There will be uh, you will have dilated vessels and all, telangiectatic vessels in lemmas related to optic neuritis. Methyl alcohol is a drug, alcohol abuse, that causes a lot of things. In Odisha, there was a yes. Kodakpur also, we got during the Toxic Duga Puja festival time. Mm -hmm. But Abhinav Hospital, the last time, uh, this chatkal say, so many patients died in our own casualty. Three patients have died in the Methanol is very easy. Methanol is very easy. Regarding the blue vision also come. Blue and uh, this is blue vision. Ha, the yellow is actually it's very difficult to document. Uh, uh, Similarly with our uh, lenoxin, uh, digoxin in high dose, or the genthopsia, genthopsia means yellow, yellow is, yellow is and toxic uh, level of when uh, digoxin and genthopsia comes. But nowadays it is, since we are not doing digitalization, so that's why the incidence have declined. But earlier days lot of cases are reported for uh, this for yellow vision, yellow vision. Is there a role of any steroid? No, steroid was given to this patient because, uh, because of uh, the tubercular, uh, tubercular and the neurotuberculosis. There is no role of steroids. Very famously known as Asmon. Asmon was that was that time of optic myelitis, optic neurotis. That is due to dihydroquinolone induced. That was very typically known as Asmon. That is due to dihydroquinolone induced. That was very typically known as Asmon. Sir, in 20, that 30 years ago, interoquinol was a quite uh, 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 the in our counter prescription. People used oh, to take two, five, six tablets. In two times, three times a dose is the earlier cases. But Asmone is reported. Then the, you are related to hydrochloroquine, even chlorpropylene, uh, uh, the antipsychotic drug. That also for the retinopathy related to that. Chloroquine is our very, very vision's related. Dr. Vriya sir had a comment regarding optic neuritis. We have 20-30 minutes more. Related to optic neuritis and drugs in medical science. So many cases have been reported.